the farm fields and rolling knobs of central Kentucky. This is the landscape that inspires Wendell Berry's work as an award-winning poet, fiction writer, and essayist. In one of his rare TV interviews, Berry, seen here in 2013 with Bill Moyers, read his poem, The Peace of Wild Things. When despair for the world grows in me, I go and lie down where the wood drake rests in his beauty on the water, and the great heron feeds. The Berry family has lived in these parts for nine generations. While pursuing a prolific writing career, Berry, like his ancestors, continued caring for this land as a farmer. The 81-year-old writer and his family now seek to pass on their farming legacy to a new generation. They've chosen to do that not through any large university agricultural program, but at this small Catholic liberal arts college about an hour's drive from Louisville, run by the Dominican Sisters of Peace. It's probably the most unlikely place that the berry farming program could have ended up. Why is that? Well, because we're so small, because we're so rural, because we're not famous. But this is, those are um, the characteristics that the Berry family appreciates and promotes. The Dominican sisters have been part of this community since 1822, teaching and farming on their own 550-acre stretch of land. That meant a lot to Wendell Berry's daughter, Mary. Their first question to me was not about my father's reputation and how it might serve uh, their desire to raise funds. Well, the Dominican Sisters of Peace um, work out of four pillars, prayer, study, community, and ministry. The first question at St. Catherine to me was, how does your work fit with the four pillars of the Domin Dominican life? Barry, whose writings often explore the connection between the natural world and the human spirit, proved a good fit for the sisters, too. I come into the presence of still water, and I feel above me the day blind stars waiting with their light. For a time, I rest in the grace of the world and am free. Wendell Berry is a deeply soulful man. He, he lives his life out of deep spiritual convictions and has a love for people, particularly simple people who are trying to build a relationship with the natural world. The Berry Farming Program at St. Catharines offers a unique interdisciplinary approach to agriculture, combining fieldwork with philosophy, studies in agricultural science and agribusiness with classes on literature, history, and culture. Leah Bayens is the program's coordinator. When Wendell says things like you can't take the culture out of agriculture, ultimately I think what he means is that you can't minimize it into an equation or minimize it into one particular scientific study. For Barry, the heart of agriculture springs from a spiritual kinship with the land. We have the world to live in and the use of it to live from on the condition that we will take good care of it. It makes an ethical and spiritual relationship to land stewardship the, the center point, not something out on the periphery. It's a belief about the land Barry laid out in a 2012 lecture called It All Turns on Affection that he delivered after receiving a National Endowment for the Humanities Medal for his lifetime of work. To have a sense of affection for one another and for the non-living uh, beings that's that's a that's what we're trying to instill as a as a goal for our students. That's why practices in soil stewardship are a major part of the Berry program. As are classes like this one in eco spirituality, taught by religion studies professor Matt Brandstetter. He's really great at bringing out the spirituality of what would otherwise otherwise seem like very simple, mundane, everyday tasks, but looked upon with the right attitude, they're kind of living mysticism. I still consider myself a person who takes the Gospels very seriously. 
a lot of my writing, I think, has been, when it hadn't been in defense of precious things, has been a giving of thanks for precious things. Mary Berry says the trend over the past century toward ever bigger industrial farms has got to change. If anything was working very well, we would have more people farming. We have three quarters of 1% of the population farming now. The Berries hope to encourage more young people to farm on mid-sized parcels of land that produce locally grown products for local markets farms that emphasize soil conservation and depend less on chemical fertilizers and herbicides. I heard Daddy say recently that big agriculture, industrial agriculture, is in its death throes. Um, it's brain dead and it's just thrashing around now. I think he's right. In a part of the country where farmers once depended for their income on growing tobacco, a crop in severe decline, berry program students are researching ways farmers can diversify and are planting new crops that may do well in Kentucky's unique soil. On this 15-acre research farm, students are participating in a government-sponsored program that grows a type of hemp used in making clothing fiber. Sean Lucas teaches soil science. The soil is not just dirt, you know, it's, it is minerals, organic materials, living roots, living microorganisms, and the more diversity you can get into that system, uh, the healthier your soil is going to be. The farming program has grown from just one student two years ago to 25 now. The students come from urban areas, from farm families, and from as far off as India and Nepal. This student plans to return eventually to his family's grain farm in West Africa. I think uh, the most attractive thing about uh, this farming program is that it teaches you how to make a productive farm, to create a productive farming system using very basic uh, techniques. I'm particularly attracted to urban agriculture and meeting the needs of undermet peoples in our urban communities. He rides in a way that you're sitting on the front porch at the farm with him. Before enrolling in the program, many of the students had never read Barry's famous poems, stories, and essays on farming, but they can now quote chapter and verse. And I always love his one quote, what I stand for is what I stand on. And to me that means a lot because we all walk on this earth and why are we not taking care of it? And that's something that he tries to convey in his writings is so that we all can get a passion for the earth and for what we do in everyday life. Mary Berry says she's thrilled that many of the students want to farm in communities where they were raised. She half jokingly says the Berry Farming Center offers degrees in quote, homecoming. We need to go someplace and dig in. So the concept of homecoming I think is simply to take root someplace, um, care about a place not just for a short amount of time, forever. The Berry family says the program is ultimately trying to recreate the kind of supportive agricultural community that it benefited from through generations of farming. We were also surrounded by neighbors and friends and family who had known the farm we bought all their lives. So they understood, they knew the mistakes we might make. They'd seen them made. They could advise us, they could give us um, what no college program could give us. It is a line of remembering Mary Berry says her family doesn't want to see lost, and one in reflected in this poem of her father's on hope. Find your hope then on the ground under your feet, your hope of heaven, let it rest on the ground underfoot. For Religion and Ethics News Weekly, I'm Judy Valente at St. Catherine College in Kentucky.